weather outlook for the country here between Tuesday, March 3rd and about Thursday, March 5th. So all those three days, we're going to talk about where the severe weather is going to set up the tornadoes, hail, wind, and I'm also going to go over some educational stuff. So before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed, educational, long-range forecast breakdowns just like this. And comment below, what was the craziest severe weather event you've ever experienced? I think I'm going to make some uh, historic weather event breakdowns on this channel. So let's get right into it here. This is Tuesday, March 3rd. <clears throat> this is early in the morning. And you see, this is the jet stream. There's a little piece of energy sitting out here, meandering out. It's going to start off in the southwestern United States. Now, ahead of it, this is where you're going to get your severe weather, where you see these black height lines kind of stretch out. That means the atmosphere is stretching out above. You got wind, really strong wind, so it's stretching out above. That's going to create lift at the surface. And uh, the severe weather is going to be kind of just on the east and northeast or northwest side of these uh, little troughs. <clears throat> The thing we got to look for, though, is a lot of the flow is on the front side. There's not a whole lot of flow back here to give to this front side. So that's going to be a limiting potential as we head towards Tuesday and Wednesday a bit. You can see that flow kind of weakens out. Whoops. So we'll go back. You can see there's a lot there. And as we go towards about Wednesday, it's or uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m., that flow kind of uh, deflates a little bit. It's only about 40 to 60, 80 knots, but there's still plenty. I mean, all you need really for uh, severe weather, if you have instability, is about 40 knots in the upper levels. But you can see this trough moves in. That would set up the severe weather for parts of Mexico and Texas as we head towards Tuesday evening. We'll go into that in a second. And then on Wednesday, the uh, show moves to the east. There's not a whole lot of flow to give on the backside. This is just really leftover flow. So I think this uh, setup will be die out as we head as it heads to the southeastern United States. Still looks to be some severe weather potential, however, and you can see this would be the prime area here on uh, Wednesday towards Louisiana, <clears throat> all the way out to about Alabama, Mississippi, and uh, perhaps even Georgia. As we head towards Thursday, this moves to the east, and uh, really, I mean, it's going to be Thursday morning when it hits the Georgia, Carolinas, and Florida region. So it'll be an early severe weather event, kind of an overnight event for that region as we head towards uh, Thursday. And usually those overnight events are uh, predominantly squall lines, especially later on in the cycle when you get this more flat flow on the front side. So I would suspect that Thursday would be more of a wind event out here overnight Wednesday, early uh, thir uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday, it's going to be out here in the south central United States with all hazards possible. And then Tuesday, all hazards possible in Texas. So let's look at the precipitation. Then we'll look at the uh, actual hazards, the instability. We'll track this storm from the southwest to the east. Okay, so this is going to be Tuesday. And you can see this low is hanging out in Mexico Tuesday at uh, you know early in the morning. You can actually see this. It's right here. And we're going to want to watch this. There's actually some snow on the back side of this thing, a little bit of cool air, but this thing is mostly a warm low. Your main jet's off to the north, so this is going to be mostly a warm storm. I don't suspect much snow with this type of event. So this is uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. This is when the main show is going to get started. Got a little bit of a cold front out here and, and a warm front kind of extending out right along the gulf. That's going to be key. The, the warm front on the GFS is right along the gulf. Okay, and your severe weather usually occurs within 40 miles of that warm front, north and south, and then also along the cold front. So this might actually end up mostly in the Gulf, but uh, we'll have to watch this. It's going to be very, very f on the far end of the southern U.S. Any shift north, and that would uh, significantly increase the severe weather potential for parts of northern Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas. But right now, it appears to be along and below the central portions of those states, so along and south of that line. So this is Tuesday. Things to get going, mostly in Texas. You can see those thunderstorms blow up uh, overnight Tuesday into Wednesday along that warm front, and it goes all the way from Georgia out to Texas. Your best flow, your best upper-level flow, moisture, instability, is going to be kind of in this region, Texas, and uh, Louisiana, so your severe storms would be in that region Tuesday into Wednesday morning. Uh, this uh, activity out farther east will be, mostly be uh, just general thunderstorms. As we head towards uh, Wednesday and to Thursday here, 
you can see what I'm talking about. Here's a low pressure system. You can see these gradients. These are the thickness lines. So the lower the number, the cooler the air typically. And you can see there's a front kind of hanging out around here. So there's a cold front, but it's south of the Gulf or uh, south of the, the coast. So, you know, that's interesting. And then we got our warm front and it's right along the coast. And uh, typically, you're, again, 40 miles north and south of that warm front is where the severe storms are, can occur. You can still get thunderstorms and precipitation much farther along and north of that front. And that's what we're going to look at here in a second. And that could go on Wednesday uh, through really everything south of Tennessee and North Carolina. As we head towards uh, Thursday, you can see this is mostly a line. So usually when these storms die out, they're lines, and that uh, affects the Carolinas. Wednesday uh, night into Thursday morning. And then after that, it exits that area. And then we get a little bit of a cool down with a, a little clipper up here in the northeast, north central United States on uh, Friday. We'll have to make another video for that. So we're going to look at the instability real quick and the moisture. <clears throat> I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. We're going to zoom into the south central United States and... Uh, show you where that front's kind of lining up if you if you look at tuesday here this is where the main show on tuesday is going to be the, this is uh, the inst the uh, dew point and this is really the best measure for uh, kind of where our setup's going to be this uh moisture overlapping that jet streak we were talking about is where the main show is going to be you got your low pressure system got a nice front extending kind of right here ish this goes from uh, through texas central louisiana southern mississippi your severe weather is going to be right along that line right there so that's where your best bet's going to be the dew points need to be 60 degrees above typically and that's kind of right along that warm front so your best uh, bet for severe weather would be right along this region right here as we uh maybe even a little bit farther south too on uh tuesday and then on wednesday this moves very fast to the east we'll go into a different view for that We'll look at Tuesday real quick. We'll look at the instability. I wanted to show you that real quick. So Tuesday uh, is, uh, we're going to go 7 p.m. here on Tuesday, which is 60 hours out. I'm going to show you the instability. This is very important. If we don't have this, it's going to mostly just be, uh, you know, thunderstorms. So mixed layer cape. All we need is about 750. With the shear we have, maybe we can get away with about 500. This is kind of measuring the, the speed of updrafts in the atmosphere, the Warmer it is at the surface, colder it air, air, the colder it is aloft, you're going to have a temperature difference, so that warm air is going to want to rise really fast. So the higher the number, essentially, you're increasing that speed, that contrast. You can see you're at about 500 to 750 cape here, so that'll be enough for some severe storms in parts of southwest Texas through south central Texas. Maybe an isolated severe storm or two out in Louisiana, Mississippi along that warm front. But your main threat is going to be near the warm front, cold front intersection in northeast Mexico and southwest Texas on Tuesday. As we head towards uh, Wednesday, we're going to change views real quick here and uh, zoom into the southeast. This is going to be a better uh, view here. You can see uh, what I'm talking about here with that warm front. And uh, we'll look at hazards in a moment. So Tuesday or Wednesday in Texas looks to be all hazards, large hail, damaging winds, and a couple of isolated tornadoes possible, especially in southwest Texas. As we head towards Thursday, uh, Wednesday here, you can see this low. It's parked right along the Gulf. If this thing can move any farther north, the severe weather potential substantially increases for Georgia, Mississippi, excuse me, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. And then, uh, you know, right now it's just off the Gulf. So your severe storms, again, are going to be 40 miles to the north and south of that warm front. Then it really is hard to get severe weather any farther than about 40 miles to the north. So you're talking maybe the Florida panhandle just all the way to near about along the Gulf and about 40 miles to the north of the Gulf on uh, Thursday. But any shift north and that can change things quite a bit. So We'll definitely make some updates if it looks potentially dangerous. This pocket right here where you see this cold front and warm front intersection, that's going to be your best bet for severe weather on this whole entire setup with uh, tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds. That would put southeast, or southeast Louisiana under the gun. So we're going to have to watch that very closely where that little pocket, that triple th point we call it, where the cold front and warm front line up together. There's a little triple point right there. If that uh, stays in the current position, it would put uh, southeast Louisiana under the gun for uh, all hazards with this type of look. And if you look at a sounding, a vertical profile in the atmosphere, you can see at least a, a slight chance at tornadoes here. Okay, so you got just enough instability. 
Got some good wind shear, so slight chance at some tornadoes as well with hail and wind, certainly possible. Look at that instability real quick and uh, see how those are uh, shaken up. I'm going to show you the surface base cape. So this is instability from the surface. If you were to lift a parcel of air from the surface, you can see it's elevated right there to about 750. But you can see what I'm talking about with that warm front. South of that warm front is where all that warm air is for that instability. And that's it's all hanging out just south of the Gulf. So, And I've been forecasting this system for a while. Again, the location of this is going to be critical. Most unstable cape that's a little bit different, it actually lifts the parcel from the biggest temperature contrast, essentially where it's most unstable in the atmosphere. Most unstable cape, if you don't get surface-based cape, like we, we didn't have any here, but we have a little bit of most unstable cape, what does that mean? Well, it typically means you're going to get elevated thunderstorms. So usually when thunderstorms are elevated, they're a little bit uh, weaker, but they can produce some isolated instances of hail and wind so you know maybe you could get some uh, elevated isolated severe storms as we had towards uh, Wednesday afternoon and evening uh, farther north but uh, right now this looks to be a, a very marginal event except for the Gulf of Mexico right along the coast about 40 miles in southeast Louisiana on the day on Wednesday we're gonna go out to uh, Thursday morning here and I'm gonna show you where this kind of uh, lines up this is Thursday at 1 p.m. this is kind of when it looks best you can see your instability is now in Florida. So this would put much of Florida under the gun with about uh, 1,000 to 2,000 capes. So plenty of instability now within this region. But as you notice, the uh, wind shear above does die out. The system has less flow on the front side. Still plenty of flow. All we need really uh, with this is, you know, 40, 50 knots plus. You know, when we have weaker instability events, we typically want a little bit more wind shear than the, the 40 knot threshold. But you can definitely see we have enough of that. So... Still should be enough uh, wind shear that would put severe weather in Florida on the day on uh, Thursday. And uh, you can see that front kind of hanging out in uh, Florida doesn't go much farther north. And you can see northeast winds out of the Carolinas. Again, if this can track a little bit farther to the north and west, this would put the Carolinas under the gun. Right now, there's just not a whole lot of moisture and instability out in that region. But again, that's a couple of days out, so we'll have to watch this region. But Thursday, that would put Florida under the gun. The winds are out of the southwest, so the tornado potential much lower because the winds are flat out of the southwest, and they're also out of the southwest. And the upper levels, typically you want curvature uh, from the surface to the upper levels because that'll increase supercell potential. So it's mostly just going to be a wind event, as we see uh, on Thursday in uh, Florida, and maybe even as far north as Georgia, but probably just going to be Florida on Thursday. So... Tornado threat, the best in southeast Louisiana. Wednesday, Tuesday, it's going to be southern Texas, Mexico. And then uh, Thursday, it's going to be a wind event out in Florida. So that's going to wrap it up. Click subscribe below if you like these videos. Comment below your best severe weather story, best day, the event. We're going to make some uh, videos about those. Check out this video up here. Subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this video. Share this with a friend. We'll see you soon.